we're going to use the four-step solving process. Let's start with the state step. So we're trying to find if there's convincing evidence that the tree frogs on the island are larger. So our null hypothesis is that mu sub island equals mu sub mainland. And our alternative hypothesis is mu sub island is greater than mu sub mainland, where mu is the true mean frog length for each of these populations. And we're going to test this at the alpha equals 0 0.05 level. Now in the stem of the problem, they say assume the conditions for inference have been met. So in our plan step, we'll say, we will use a two-sample t-test as we know the conditions of inference have been met. Now let's look at the computer output. We actually have two different p-values, right here and here. And in AP stats and t-procedures, we don't pull our variances. This one's equivalent to the not pulled results, so it's the one we want. So our p-value is 0 0.0813. And this is based on a T distribution with 40.6 degrees freedom. So let's draw that density curve. So our test statistic T is 1.78. That's probably about right here. And this area to the right is the p-value, 0 0.0813. In our do step, let's also write the sample means and sample standard deviations. Now make sure you don't confuse the standard deviation with the standard error. The standard error has had the central limit theorem applied, and it's already been divided by the square root of the sample size. So this will actually be helpful when we build our confidence interval. Now in our samples, the average island frog was longer than the average mainland frog, but the differences between these samples weren't great enough for us to conclude that the population lengths for these frogs are different. So let's conclude with a p-value of 0 0.0813, which is greater than alpha equals 0 0.05, we fail to reject the null hypothesis. There is insufficient evidence to support the claim that the tree frogs on the island are larger. Now there's a possibility we're making a type two error here. The tree frogs on the island might in fact have a true mean length that's longer than the tree frogs on the mainland. But our two samples didn't give us enough evidence to make that conclusion. So for now, we have to say there's insufficient evidence. Every confidence interval is a point estimate plus or minus a margin of error, and the margin of error is the product of the critical value times the standard error. So in our case, the point estimate is going to be the difference between the sample means, and we're going to add and subtract t star times this formula for standard error. So our mean frog length on the island was 45.229, and we're going to subtract out the mainland mean frog length. So our point estimate is 5.273. That's the difference between the sample means. Now to figure out t star, I'm going to draw a t distribution with 40.6 degrees freedom. And I got that degrees freedom from the output for the unequal variances. Now if we want to isolate the middle 95% of this density curve, that means there's going to be 2.5% in the tail. So we're going to find what cuts off the lower 97.5% of this t distribution and that's the 95% plus the 2.5% in the tail. So on your calculator, press second vars and go down to inverse t. For area, put 0.975, and for degrees freedom, put 40.6. So our critical value t star is approximately 2.02. .02. Now let's calculate the standard error. I'm going to type the square root sign first, and anytime you're typing fractions into the calculator, there's a trick you can use. If you press alpha and then the y equals and press enter, you can now type in a fraction. So we have our standard deviation of the island lengths. We're going to square that, and that's being divided by the sample size, 32. Now if I press over and I input another fraction, I can type everything for the mainland population. All right, so my standard error is about 3.03. .03. I'm gonna multiply that by our exact value of our t star by using inverse t again. And there's our margin of error, 6.111 approximately. Now on the calculator, I'm gonna press this STO button at the bottom, store, and I'm gonna store this margin of error as x. So now if I type my point estimate, I can add x to get the upper end of our confidence interval, and subtract x to get the lower end of our confidence interval. Now always round the lower end of your confidence interval down and the upper end of your confidence interval up. 
Now on the AP exam, you don't actually have to do these calculations by hand. You can use your calculator. If you press STAT and you go over to TEST, option zero on this calculator is two sample T interval. And it says, do you have the original data or the summary stats? We have the summary stats. And from the computer output, I know that my island sample mean was 45.229. And our sample standard deviation for the island was 15.931. Our sample size is 32, and we'll input the mainland information in for variable two. For confidence level, we'll leave it at 95%, and for T procedures, always choose no for pooled, and we'll press calculate. And you can see this confidence interval matches what we got by hand. So let's interpret this confidence interval. We are 95% confident that the true mean difference in lengths between the island tree frogs and the mainland tree frogs is between negative 0.838 and 11.345 millimeters. Since zero is contained in this interval, a difference in length may not exist between the populations. Before we finish, one word of caution. Often when students are trying to calculate T star for a confidence interval, they use the T from the output. This is not the right T to use. This is our test statistic from the significance test. You have to calculate T star using inverse T for whatever confidence level you want. Like this video? Check out my book, The Ultimate AP Statistics Practice Book. It's got 100 problems, all with videos just like this. You can pick it up on Amazon.com.